Hi everyone, I'm Daniel from Spain. I'm a PhD student at the University of Geneva, in particular at the Department of Theoretical Physics, working in the group of the Professor Camille Bonvin. How did you end up doing a PhD in physics? Well, ever since I can remember, I have always been interested in uh, science and technology. I consider myself a very curious person who likes to understand the fundamentals of things. So when I finished my bachelor in physics, I decided that the most interesting path to follow was to continue my scientific formation. Then I moved to Geneva and I started the master in physics, where I had the opportunity to do the master thesis uh, with a professor of the Department of Theoretical Physics, Lucas Lombriser. Thanks to that year of research, I basically fell in love with cosmology and I decided that the best path to follow was to become a PhD in physics and to study in greater depth the mystery of our universe. Was this your original idea when you started at university? Actually, it was not. Uh, my university adventure started as a prospective engineer. When I finished in high school, I enrolled in aerospace engineering. I was uh, interested in outer space and the artifacts that are capable of exploring it. And it was also a career that promised very good opportunities afterwards. But at the end, I spent a couple of years there. I was not entirely satisfied with my progress. And uh, I decided that uh, it w I would probably do better in, a, in another discipline. Was it a difficult decision to change like this? In part, yes. It was a radical change in my life and I was not sure how my family would deal with it. I didn't want them to think that I was just shooting in the dark and they just wanted to withdraw from something that I started. But in other sense, uh, I was pretty clear that I wanted to, continue to change for physics. I can blame this because I was reading too much uh, people like Feynman and Stephen Hawking and uh, I wanted to, to know much more about uh, the things they explain. I wanted to become an expert on general relativity, I wanted to become an expert on quantum mechanics. And of course, I think it was the best decision I ever made. You are also living and working in a foreign country, away from home. How do you feel about this? Well, I, I would be lying if I say it's easy, because living away from your family and your long life friends is not easy at all. But uh, I have always been very comfortable here since I moved. Also, Switzerland is a fantastic country, and not only uh, because of the cheese and the, and the chocolate that everyone knows. The language has not been an obstacle either, because I had some knowledge of French because before, coming, before arriving here. So I think it didn't take too long to me to, to adapt to, to my new life in the new country, except for the, for the hours of uh, sunshine. Could you briefly explain what you are currently working on? I can try, but please stop me if I go off the rails. Um, my work and one of my colleagues, together with Professor Camille Bonvin, falls within the study of the large-scale structure of the universe. The structure drawn by galaxies in the sky is not random, but rather it depends on the theory of gravity. So if you change the theory of gravity, you will see a different pattern on the sky. Well, my job is then to think about and design new methods to test the theory of general relativity, the theory of gravity, and uh, uh, to test it using data uh, extracted from what astronomers see in the distribution of galaxies in the sky. What are the tools that a theoretical physicist needs in his daily life? Mm, your brain, paper and pen. That's it. <laughs> now, more, more seriously, uh, to work in theoretical physics, uh, you need a good knowledge of uh, math to, and how to perform uh, involved calculations. Uh, when you want to calculate something that has never been calculated before, you may need to design the code to, to do it. But uh, to be honest, uh, the type of math we are using in our daily life is not something uh, very sophisticated. It's just the statistics. To follow a little bit with the previous question on what we were working on, uh, what we try to do uh, more precisely in, in, my, in my work is to assess how well we can measure, uh, how well we can statistically measure a parameter of a theory uh, given the, the data available. 
well, to be completely honest, uh, to, the, to measure uh, what we want to measure, we don't have uh, the, the data yet, but we hope to have it in the, in the near future, in the, with the next uh, generation of upcoming surveys. What do you plan to do after finishing your PhD? That's actually the most difficult question. Um, it's not that I have not clear uh, what to do, but uh, that it rather depends on the opportunities that, that appear. Uh, obviously, mm, to me, the most interesting path to follow would be to continue my scientific formation, to, con to work in more projects, in more research projects, to teach the new uh, students uh, the, the secrets of the universe and the secrets of uh, the tricks, that, uh, the mathematical tricks you can use to, to calculate uh, things in physics, the concepts uh, of physics itself. But also I am realistic and I know that uh, there are no many positions available and that a large proportion of academics actually leave or are somewhat forced to leave academia after they finish their PhD. So in that sense, uh, I'm also open to other opportunities that can appear in other fields and uh, also open to, to change my career path. It is something that I have done before. So in that sense, it will not be a problem. It will only be just a new challenge uh, to take on. <laughs>